A pleasant afternoon to all participants to this webinar. I am Vanessa Asayas of the Davao Oriental State University and it is my pleasure to join you in this event. Today I will be sharing research-based strategies for effective tutorials, particularly for sciences in the secondary level. Whether in person or online, Facilitating tutorials is an opportunity to work closely with our students and to understand where they are in their learning. Tutorials will run differently depending on the discipline that we are teaching. Science in particular can be a very tricky subject for students of all ages. It involves a great deal of memorization, analysis, comprehension, and creative thinking. And throughout secondary level, learners will be introduced to a variety of science courses and keeping up with all this information can be very daunting. However, the assistance of an experienced science tutor who can be a teacher, a parent, or a learned professional, or even a fellow student can help transform science into one that is approachable and fun. Numerous aspects are involved in conducting tutorials, and one important component is the planning. For an effective tutorial, the tutor should master the subject, of course, or at least be familiar with it. To tutor science, the tutor needs to be very familiar with the area of science that he is tutoring, whether it is biology, chemistry, physics, or other areas. And if we are not proficient with the topic that is being studied, then we should research background information and study the topic. As the saying goes, we cannot give what we don't have. And tutors should also establish the learning goals. Tutorials should have their own learning goals that are congruent or in line with the goals of the subject itself. And tutors must communicate these goals to the learners or to the tutees. We should focus not on covering material, but rather we should encourage active learning among our tutees or our learners. We should also give them the opportunity to practice with our feedback as well as the core concepts or the skills of the course that we are teaching. Planning also involves setting the guidelines on how the tutorial will run. So first, we must inform our tutees about these guidelines, and we can also ask for their inputs. This will make them feel more involved in the tutorial process. And if we are doing online tutorials, we must inform the learners about the online tools and the platforms that we will be using. We must also provide clear guidelines on how our online tutorials will work. And just like any other lesson, tutorials must also begin with the learning objectives for the session in order to help us optimize our time and focus on the main concepts. So this includes identifying what the tutee needs and what topics they need help with. Other key strategies for effective tutorials include building up trust and rapport with the learners. So whether we are tutoring our own children or students, this is a solid foundation for any tutorial session. We may start by asking them how their day or their week has been and we can talk anything under the sun for a few minutes before we start the session. And so it is important to make them feel relaxed and they should see us as someone who is there to help them rather than strictly assess them. And in fact, instilling the, the lessons with a sense of fun and injecting humor is a key to boosting our tutees' engagement. 
And in conducting tutorials, a very good starting point is also reviewing our learners' notes, lecture notes or study notes. We must make sure that the student comprehends what he wrote down in his notes. And when you tutor science, we must also ask questions based upon their notes. So that is, that is very important. Anchored on reviewing our learners' notes, we can check for understanding. So we can check their understanding by asking them to explain a concept back, back to us. So instead of simply asking them if they understood the, the topic or the concept, then make your tutee your tutor. So do an um, alteration. Then afterwards, you may explain any of the scientific concepts that the learners did not grasp. And if a tutee does not understand a concept, then explain it again using different words or examples. And in addition, when explaining a difficult or a new concept, we must go slow. So we must give our chuti time to process the new information and try to explain the concepts at a level of learning that the chutis will understand. And if our chutis are in fact facing specific problems in their previous sessions or in their lessons, then we must recap these areas. We can also identify problem areas by reviewing their old tests or results of their previous assessments. And if you set them any homework, then we can also run through their answers and make sure that they have clarified their their knowledge banking on the homework then we we can move on to the next topic another thing is to scaffold learning in shuttering the learners the idea is not to do the work but rather it is to scaffold the learning providing tips prompts learning tools and posing questions that will enable the learner to get there. So essentially on their own. So first, we must identify what the learner can do without any assistance. And then what can be achieved with guidance and encouragement. So build on the base knowledge that the learner has base ideas. They have schema. And one of the roles of the tutor is to identify the skills that our tutees are close to mastering. And then we provide opportunities for them to expand their mastery. Now, each branch of science has keywords that a student must learn for them to be successful. And when you tutor science, one effective strategy is letting the tutee familiarize root words because, because these root words, this familiarization of vocabulary terms, scientific terms, will help them learn how to decode new vocabulary words. So encourage them to look up and learn scientific terms, jargons, and unfamiliar words in general. So whenever the student does not know what a word means, whether a scientific term or any other scientific um, words, tell them to look it up in a dictionary. Just tell them to Google it. And the student will need to know what the word means in order to understand the lessons he that he must learn and another important strategy is also reviewing relevant equations so some branches of science such as chemistry and physics rely heavily on certain equations and the learners won't be successful until they master those equations so make sure that you cover those equations until the learners know them by heart Another strategy is to emphasize that scientific concepts build upon one another. So each scientific concept builds upon the next. So when you tutor science, 
emphasize that the chuti must keep up with the lessons as they are taught in the classroom so that the tutoring time is a review rather than learning new information so we bank on the the lessons in the classroom it is also helpful to introduce general concepts before tackling more science more specific ones for example a student must understand what a biosphere is before she is ready to move on to understanding the cellular level so that's one effective technique and we must start with the big picture and then work toward the details laboratory activities are also important in learning science tutors must follow up on the concepts that the students learn in the lab so we must make sure that our students have understood what they did in the laboratory the laboratory experiments that they did and the tutors may ask the tutees to retell or to explain what happened during lab we can also use the study questions in laboratory work workbooks textbooks in order to assess the tutee's knowledge of the scientific concepts we can also incorporate technology in our tutorial sessions so we are so blessed to live when a world of knowledge can be ours in just a few keystrokes and most of it is free for the taking of course there's the internet we have youtube we have google so even better we're not just treated to the written world there are images and videos and charts and graphs simulations so the, the internet is not just a digital storehouse of accumulated information educational platforms we have learning applications and even game-based educational tools that are proven to be successful in teaching our students in all disciplines and most importantly though in in this um, covid era we are facing several challenges there are many applications online applications that we can make use of like online tutoring that is very relevant very beneficial for us tutors and for our learners also we must pace our lessons we cannot expect our learners to concentrate for hours so there are many factors that affect attention span such as distractions nearby maybe our tutees are hungry maybe they are tired or maybe they just don't find our lesson interesting so to help our learners focus on the lesson we must bring creativity to the tasks at hand and we must allow them to have fun while they are learning we must also include small breaks every after tough tasks and of course it is very essential to commend good performance receiving praise for doing something well is highly motivating so sincere praise from us the tutors for the insights achievements um, participation or even the helpfulness of our learners will make them feel good and and through that they will most likely participate again in our tutorial sessions Also, we must request feedback from our tutees. The consequences of your chosen tutoring strategies are likely to be far-reaching. So make sure that we request feedback from our tutees regularly. So we may have go-to tactics and we, we uh, are very familiar with these tactics and techniques. However, 
these may not be the preferred learning styles of our students or because of time constraints, these may not be applicable. So the ultimate aim is to make the most of our students limited time and resources so their views on the structure and the content of our tutorial sessions should always be of primary importance now as useful as we are to our tutees our ultimate aim is training them to be independent learners we may start by asking questions that don't just require a yes or no answer. So we can ask open-ended questions. So the thing is, we must foster independence among our tutees. Now here are several ideas to try to incorporate in our tutorial sessions. One is assessment through games. Playing games tests our students' comprehensions of the subject material, and it also allows them to use what they have just learned. So nowadays, there are plenty of online games that demonstrate science concepts, so we might as well incorporate these games. We also have the pause technique. Initially, this technique was developed to encourage college and university students to think about what have just been Discuss. So we can also use the pause technique to ensure that our learners do not tune out or lose interest in our topic during our tutorial sessions. Now, if you are tutoring your learners in a subject that involves a significant degree of memory work, such as biology, we can drill our students frequently on particular points in order to ensure that they retain important facts and information. A change in setting may also be a very good idea. For instance, instead of always holding lessons at our houses, our homes, or in just a one um, setting, then we can arrange a few sessions in a different location. So being outdoors can significantly mitigate stress, thereby promoting a relaxed and fruitful learning environment. So those are just a few of the many strategies for an effective tutorial, especially in science discipline. I hope we can apply those and may our endeavors be fruitful. Thank you.